Hello students, I am Dr. Kamal Preet Kocher. I am working at uh, Nutrition Laboratory at All India Institute of Medical Sciences and I shall be talking to you about regulation of food intake, appetite and body weight. The learning objectives for our lesson are, first we shall discuss the historical view of regulation of food intake. Then I shall explain the role of brain areas, brain stem and hypothalamus in feeding regulation. Then we will enumerate the factors which regulate food intake and describe the complex homeostatic mechanisms of appetite regulation and also signify the regulation of food intake and energy storage and discuss the mechanisms of eating and the regulation of body weight. Since the progression of mankind development, food has been an important part of our existence and history says that food intake could be because of two type of hypothesis. One is the lipostatic hypothesis formulated by Kennedy in 1953 that the fat or adipose tissue produces a specific lipostatic factor. The other hypothesis by Mayer and Thomas is the glucostatic hypothesis that is fluctuations in the blood glucose levels lead to stimulating or inhibiting food intake by the regulating organs, the brain and the liver. And the combination of above mentioned both hypotheses is the current view. The physiological regulation of food intake is a complex homeostatic process that is regulated by many endocrine and metabolic factors in combination with visual, olfactory, taste, emotions, memory and life conditions. The balance between energy intake and expenditure is tightly regulated and body weight is stable despite changes in day to day food intake and fluctuations. But when this border is overestimated, the balance is broken. Food intake and energy expenditure normally are in a balance and regulation is by hypothalamic satiety center where a number of neuropeptides and hormones like leptin and insulin work. Sympathetic nervous system also helps to control energy expenditure and fat breakdown or lipolysis. From the gastrointestinal tract, hormones like ghrelin and peptide YY also contribute to this and from adipose tissue, leptin, adiponectin resisting and transforming nuclear factor alpha help. Hypothalamus and brainstem are crucial in the central regulation of feeding integration, brain neurotransmitters, peripheral neurohumeral afferents, adipocyte derived signals and the GIT peptides. The arcuate nucleus receptors in the hypothalamus for hormones and neuropeptides regulate feeding. The paraventricular nucleus integrates the signals of arcuate nucleus with the thyroid and the hypothalamic pituitary axis. The vagus nerve also brings satiety centers to brain uh, satiety signals to brain stem after ingestion of a meal. The nucleus of tractor solitarius and paraventricular nucleus have connections of brain stem with the hypothalamus through serotonergic neurons and this is modulated by neocortex also. The satiety factors when we consider regulating food intake are the stomach and duodenum distension by vagus nerve, heat or temperature of the food, increased glucose, amino acids and lipids in the bloodstream, 
action of catecholamines, serotonin, ACTH is also contributing as well as presence of food in stomach leads to insulin and leptin and presence of lipids in the duodenum leads to cholecystokinin. The melanocyte stimulating hormone glucagon and peptide, peptide YY also contribute. Now, we shall talk about hunger factors. The hunger contractions, cold temperature, decreased glucose, amino acids and lipids in blood, factors like orexins, appetite inducers, endorphins, hormones like galanin, neurotransmitters like glutamic acid and hormones like cortisol and neuropeptide Y as well as GABA, ghrelin and AMPK are hunger factors. The brain is the main regulatory center for appetite or food intake. Brain is the integration center for appetite, how it is so? It produces a coordinated behavioral, endocrine and autonomic response. Under normal conditions, there is a homeostatic control of food intake and metabolism according to body needs. However, malfunction in the reward pathways can be linked to growing problem of obesity or over intake and storage of fat. Obesity can lead to gallstones or cholelithiasis, problems in the joints, osteoarthritis, reproductive problems like infertility, stroke, infections in the skin, cutaneous infection and wound healing deficiencies as well as a general increase in mortality. Complex homeostatic mechanisms of appetite also include metabolic mechanisms of the input stations in the hypothalamus and brainstem which are sensitive to these inputs. The link between food intake and energy expenditure needs a neural framework to integrate these metabolic cues with the reward properties of the brain. Therefore, we can design novel therapeutic strategies for obesity to attack these areas. The brain mechanisms which control appetite include as we have said arcuate nucleus, hunger sensitive neurons, information from all parts of the body regarding hunger converge onto these neurons in the hypothalamus and arcuate nucleus is a part of hypothalamus and contains two sets of neurons. Neurons which are sensitive to hunger signals and neurons which are sensitive to society signals. These neurons promote hunger release via neuropeptide Y and AGRP or agouti related protein. These are the orexic pathway and they promote hunger. Activity of these neurons is increased by signals coming from stomach like ghrelin and activity is decreased by satiety signals related to meal that is cholecystokinin and adiposity signals like leptin and insulin which can then cause satiety or stoppage of eating. The satiety sensitive neurons that promote satiety neurotransmitter release are pro opio melanocortin, alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, stimulating drugs such as cocaine and amphetamine related transcript, they promote satiety that is they are anorexigenic or anorexia genetic. Activity is increased by meal related signals from lipids through cholecystokinin in the duodenum and adiposity signals leptin and insulin. 
activity is decreased by the hunger neurons that is NPY and AGRP neurons. The PUMC car neurons inhibit activity of the hunger neurons. Therefore, these two types of neurons play opposing but coordinating roles in an integrated way thereby regulating our appetite. Dietary balances are very important. Energy available in the food has to be balanced by intake and output. Carbohydrates and fats act as protein sparers. Protein makes our muscle mass and there are many methods for determining the metabolic utilization of carbohydrates, fats and proteins and therefore device interventions. Nitrogen excretion method can be used to assess protein metabolism. Therefore, we need to have a combination of carbohydrates, proteins and fats in a balanced diet. Just like we regulate food intake, we need to regulate energy storage also. Regulation of food intake we have already discussed is the hypothalamus which is the hunger and satiety centers as well as neurons and neurotransmitters in the hypothalamus. This work was done in our department by Professor B. K. Anand, the feeding and the satiety centers by work in animals. and. Now we know that there are neural centers which control feeding and influence the mechanical process of feeding or eating. Factors that regulate quantity of food intake can be also discussed in ways of time that is short term regulation of food intake which is by gastrointestinal filling or distension that inhibits feeding, gastrointestinal hormone release suppresses feeding, ghrelin which is a gastrointestinal hormone increases the feeding, the receptors in the mouth oral receptors meter our food intake. These are short term regulations. Intermediate and long term regulations are also taking part in this. The effect of blood concentration of the products of digestion like glucose, amino acids and lipids on hunger and feeding centers in the hypothalamus which we already discussed. The temperature regulation, the hot or cold food and food intake, the feedback signals from the adipose tissue, the status of body fat also regulate food intake through leptin and adiponectin that is the fat tissue hormones. Now we come to body weight regulation. Each individual has a biologically predetermined natural set point for body weight. So, body weight is stable as long as the behavioral and the environmental factors which affect energy balance are constant. As we know in cold climates we eat more food to maintain body temperature. The importance of having both long and short term regulatory systems for feeding controls our set points in the body that is homeostasis. So, the control of hunger and feeding therefore, lies in the hypothalamus ventromedial satiety center and the lateral hypothalamus feeding center. The control of water intake and thirst is also in the hypothalamus in the supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus. Thus, hypothalamus acts like the head ganglion for autonomic and neural regulations of food intake. The heat produced in the body and the heat taken up under certain circumstances from the environment also influences food intake. Now, we shall discuss respiratory quotient that is the ratio of carbon dioxide released in metabolism to the oxygen taken in immediately after a meal almost all the food which is metabolized is carbohydrates which gives a respiratory quotient of 1. But 8 to 10 hours after a meal the body has already used up the readily available carbohydrates and now the respiratory quotient 
falls to less than 1 that is for fat metabolism which is about 0 0.7. In untreated diabetes mellitus little carbohydrate can be utilized by the body cells under any conditions due to insulin resistance which is either not present or is not acting. Therefore, diabetes is severe most of the time the respiratory quotient remains near that for the fat metabolism that is 0 0.7 due to less utilization of carbohydrates in the diet. Coming to another factor which is mechanism of eating, the eating for the body is response to physiological need that is homeostasis to replenish the fuel for the body. Ghrelin hormone from stomach signals a feeling of hunger when the stored fuels have been used up in between meals. Ghrelin levels fall quickly after a meal. The other type of eating is eating for pleasure or hedonic eating. Eating palatable food is innately pleasurable and it positively reinforces our reward areas. And this type of eating often occurs in social situations in the absence of physiological need and they serve to increase meal number and meal duration. Even comfort eating during depression and anxiety is part of this type of eating. How does our body know how much body fat we have? The leptin hormone functions as an adipostat. It is synthesized in the adipocytes and released from there in proportion to the body adiposity that is the weight gain. Increases leptin weight loss and decreased leptin leads to activation of leptin receptors in the arcuate nucleus or the hunger neurons to stimulate feeding. Leptin maintains body adiposity by informing the brain about changes in fat stores. Deficits in leptin production or action promote weight gain. Leptin is called the thin hormone. Now we come to novel approaches for treatment and prevention of obesity. From our knowledge therefore, we can address the overlap of motivational mechanisms of obesity and drug addiction also. The neuro adaptations resulting from excessive intake and how we can do behavioral and pharmacological interventions currently to treat drug addiction can also be therefore used for treatment and prevention of obesity. Although there is no current treatment of obesity, but using this approach we can reintegrate our body fat regulation and balance and further research could lead to changes in approach to treating disorders including psychological counseling and behavior therapy. Coming to the summary, when energy stores of body fall below normal, the feeding centers of hypothalamus and other areas of the brain become active, highly active and the person exhibits increased hunger and approaches food or searches for food. Conversely, when the energy stores, mainly the fat stores are already sufficient and abundant, the person usually loses the sensation of hunger or desire to eat and develops a state of satiety or fullness. Thank you.